There's a special tradition in the Senate, and it is unique to, to George Washington that every year, on or about his birthday in the Senate, a senator, and it alternates back and forth between the parties, will read Washington's farewell address that he delivered to Congress as he finished his presidency. And um, there's no other speech that gets that treatment. There's no other person that gets that treatment. Um, and it is because of the unique character and qualities of the speech. The, the speech is written in language that is language of the day. So you kind of have to get used to that. It's like seeing a Shakespeare play. You have to adjust to the language. But the insights in the speech are every bit as fresh today uh, as they were when Washington delivered. I mean, three insights just kind of from memory that are very powerful are first, his warnings about the dangers of excessive partisanship. Um, you know, Washington had his own struggles and tussles with Congress, even though they loved him and they would have made him president for life. That didn't mean that they always liked each other. Um, and he saw the dangers of political parties and excessive partisanship and warned against them in ways that a, a listener today will hear and immediately respond to. Um, second, he warned about, uh, about debt and deficits and, and fiscal imprudence. Um, he was a guy in his own personal life who cared about that, but he also understood that it was really important for the nation to be smart on fiscal matters. And the third thing that Washington does, which is very powerful, it's, it's a strain of American thought that, and there's a competing strain, but you can almost look at our history as a tussle between these competing strains, is, is Washington argues about being really wary of foreign entanglements, about alliances or treaties or having permanent friends or permanent enemies. Washington sort of had the sense that we were blessed with oceans uh, on each side and that while we should strive for good relations with all, we shouldn't needlessly become entangled in the affairs of other nations. I think the Washington tradition, it's, you know, people sometimes talk about isolationism. That's not what Washington was about, but he was no permanent friends, no permanent enemies. Let's think about American interests first. I would say his is one tradition, and the other tradition would be what I would call the Teddy Roosevelt tradition. And Teddy Roosevelt was probably the first American president who, you know, in the early 1900s saw that America could be a global deal maker. He brokered the end of the Russo-Japanese War and won a Nobel Prize for doing it. So he was he was actually okay with entanglements and engagement. But you can look at our our political history back and forth over time. Are we're more engaged, we're less engaged. And Washington probably did about the most uh, compelling job of laying out the reasons for being skeptical about entanglements. And so when that is read every year, you know, we. We'll, we'll read this speech. I'm talking to you now in, in February. We'll read this speech in 10 days. And when people are in that chamber and they hear it read, they'll be thinking about what should we do with respect to jihadism in the Middle East? What, what should we do with respect to a negotiation with Iran over nuclear weapons? Or what should we do with NATO at a time when Russia is flexing its muscles in the Ukraine? His words just immediately call to mind situations in the world today, and they make us reflect about what the American role should be. It's the, it's the special nature of the speech and the raising of issues that are really timeless issues that, that uh, enables that one speech to be the one that Congress, the Senate, you know, hears every year.